And I know that um, we'll introduce the new characters as they arrive. All right. I don't see us live right now. <clears throat> yeah, we're live. Yeah, it's not working for me. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I, got a, I refreshed and it came up. I had to refresh like three times. Mm. Yes, I don't have a... I'm not really paying attention, so if something happens in chat, somebody has to tell me about it because I don't... Yeah, me too. Pay attention to that. Um, so, it's been about a week. So now winter officially is going to be... is about five weeks away now. And the sense of hunger and desperation is increasing as the encampment has been here for a while, so the area is kind of getting hunted out. Um, the youth are, are pretty successful at getting small game, so once all the small game are gone... Anything larger tends to, you know, move away. So then, you know, things that might eat the small game, they team up and eat the big game. And the big game goes farther away. So the area is getting close to being hunted out. There have been a lot of groups coming back and camping nearby in the past week. A lot of these are warriors. Some of them are returning to their tents. Some are injured. Some are being buried after some of the initial fights that have been going on with some of the humanoids. And there's a lot of panic because normally they're well into stocking up for the winter, but all the warriors have been off fighting and doing uh, military type operations. And so they haven't been hunting. So they've been food. They did take some logistic supplies, but they are very short and everybody feels it. Everybody is scared about the winter to come. And you're scared because you you know what this all means. If you're not if you don't have it, it means barely make it. And you know the younger and older people probably won't make it. And there's so there's a lot of fear uh, in the camp. And we we found some supplies with the humanoids. How much was there? Like we distributed some amongst. Yes, yeah, so you shared it with uh, you shared it with the with the folks at the tent of tents of lament. So they had a couple of days. So you've kept them alive for another week. Between foraging, the the small game hunting that the younger people can do and you can do, they've been barely hanging on with not any stockage to spare. So it's like find food that day or they don't eat. About, I don't know, I'm going to say from the encampment, several of you. And I guess I'll start with, uh, with Elytron. As you're hiking along the road, you can see that there's evidence of movement through the grass. You see trails and tracks. They're all kind of going towards uh, the same destination. And you can see in the distance there's some smoke. And as you're walking in that direction, you actually chance upon two other people who are all also walking in that direction. One of them is named Heath Stag. The other is named Red Fist. So why don't you introduce what you look like, Daniel, and we'll go through each of the new people as they meet. Sure. So Elytron, uh, shorter, light build, dark hair human who's cloaked in some untanned hides that look kind of roughly put together, um, well-worn, uh, has a small hatchet with little like handmade carvings up and down the hilt through his um, belt loop and a backpack on his back. He has a bunch of little pockets um, on his belt and up the front of his crude, looks like yet to be finished leather armor. All right. Mike? <clears throat> Heathstag is about six feet tall. He's got long black hair, brown eyes, tan skin. He's wearing leather armor, which is a darker leather armor, and it's frayed on the sides of both of his arms. Uh, he carries a very long composite bow and <clears throat> has a, a scar right underneath his chin that goes along his jawline on the left side of his face. I will, uh, uh, of note to the other uh, characters, is that his bow is something that you 
probably never seen before. You've never seen a bow that a long bow before. You've only seen the short bows. It's pretty surprising. It's mm. also decorated with feathers. Sure. But how many arrows does he have? Eight. <laughs> how Eight do you get arrows. arrows? <laughs> Preferential treat. Okay, I, I'm gonna call my union rep. <laughs> ah, hey, maybe he'll share, John. <laughs> All right, in Red Fist, uh, you see uh, someone well over six feet tall. He's got a broad frame, but lean of sinew, like he has been traveling in the wilderness alone. Uh, not much flesh on his frame. He has uh, hair cropped at the shoulders. And rugged features, just a bit too rugged to truly be called handsome. But there is a presence about him as he walks, and he carries himself as though he feels entitled to command. Uh, he wears tattered leather armor, a simple hand axe at his hip, and a short bow strung across his shoulder, a small leather sack um, on his side as well. Uh, you see he also has several smaller scars, and uh, he has a piercing green gaze, and looks like he's constantly watching the horizon. Also, you see he has a uh, leather thong around his neck with a wooden ring hanging off of it and um, a sense of bitterness. So you all three kind of walk up on each other um, as you're headed towards the same destination. What do you do? What do you say? I introduce myself to the both of them and leave it right at that. <laughs> um, as Harstag introduces himself, um, Heathstrag, um, Redfist looks over. It is well met. What carries you on this road? Who is asking? <clears throat> I am Red Fist. I am Elatron. Your tribe? Allahu. Hmm. Gone now. Well, you both Not seem either. capable. Yeah, kind of gives a crooked smile at that. Uh, you see he kind of fiddles with the ring around his neck a bit and says, All lands here are dangerous. We travel together. Perhaps. I would be, I, I would travel with you. Daniel, can you up your sound just a little bit if possible? Say again? Can you up your sound a little bit if possible? I, I yeah, don't know. I, I can barely hear you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I'm is this better? Now. No problem. Is this louder? Just, you know, just a request from the audience. Right. I don't know how to do that. I mean, I want to check that. No, no. You can just talk, you know, talk louder. Talk, uh, talk, is this yeah. better? That's good. Yeah. 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 That's Thank better. Thank you. Gotcha. Brought my closer. Apologies. Is this louder? <clears throat> It was just it was just Daniel, Tim. Yeah, it was just Daniel, Tim, not you. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I'm gonna shut up right now. Tim, uh, Kayla's got eleven regulars. Everyone else got one. Well, you mean she just got eleven more? Eleven more. Uh, yes. She's got thirty-one now. Yes, and wh everyone else got everyone else got one in a six hundred cheer. So there you Let go. Let me right. guess who's in chat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right. All right. Let's let's do this. Right. Uh, Death, Crow, <laughs> Death Crow, you have six. Elawe, you have thirty-one. Jothi, you have four. I almost said, "Is what? What is the Elatron? What's the translation of that? Is that a is blue that a, beetle?" All right. I wrote down blue beetle, so I was like, uh, mm -hmm. uh, "You have one." Keep stag one. One what? And red fist. This one uh, hero point. The way I do hero points is for every 100, you get a hero point. If you get up to 10, you can cash those 10 in for a special. And my specials either give you a chance to re-roll a roll, you get an extra half action, 
or you get an extra parry. So that's what you can use those for. Right on. Two regular for Patrick. <clears throat> Thank you. Patrick, you're at eight. I look to Red Fist and, and say, as, 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 as I put my hand upon his shoulder, I judge to, to make sure he's not going <clears> to <throat> take my head off by doing this. But I say, if this road is yours to travel, then I will certainly travel it with you. What tribe are you from again? Um, you see uh, the muscles in his jaw clench and ripple beneath the skin. I was of Black Horse. I am no more. Mm -hmm. I am of Tribe of the Elk, last remaining. Everyone wiped out by the fanged ones. Mm. All dead. Back to the mud. This is the way of all men. The buzzkill. You guys are. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's supposed to be that way. You're the underdogs. It's pretty right. dour, so, you know. Yeah, it's so should, you, yeah should these You're very should... close to the actual major encampment. And you see, there's a lot of other travelers arriving and you can see there's adjacent camping areas getting set up as you approach those you can see by there's people posted as guards and you can see by their demeanor you can just keep on walking don't even try to stop they're, they're like <clears throat> uh, securing their specific areas you see there's injured being taken into the main camp and as you walk into the to the to the main camp, you can see that the most all the tentage is scattered around in, in a rough horseshoe shape, and there's a large fire in the middle. You can see there's larger ceremonial tents towards this, the very center of the uh, horseshoe, and the opening of the horseshoe faces east. As do you notice, most of the tent openings are facing east. And there's a number of people who are kind of waving you over since they see that you're you're traveling and you're strangers. Hmm. And, then, and what time of day is it, Tim? It's mid morning. Okay. There's a cooking fires going on. There's a there's a lot of hustling and bustling around. You see, there's a, a lot of a lot of the hoi polloi and the camper busy doing stuff. Gothy. Okay. Um, How's the track Maybe you should prepare some more tea. Looks like we have some more guests. Yeah, I'm making the morning mushroom tea. All right. When uh, they're coming to the actual the front of the main part of the camp, they haven't been they have been kicked over to the tents of lament yet, but they're about to. <laughs> <laughs> it's a brewing. Yeah. So there's a. It looks like a wise man. It looks like a person. The way he's wearing a lot of adornments, a lot of uh, carvings, <laughs> carved stone and wood. Mm -hmm. And he makes polite inquiries as to where you're from. And he kind of looks, he's looking at you and seems to be concentrating as he's looking into your eyes. He gets close and he looks into your eyes. And he does that to each of you. He says, welcome to the Pelu. We are in a state of uncertainty right now, and we have a meeting of the chiefs later today. There's also, he looks at Heathstag. He says, there's also a meeting of the wise men and women today. Ooh, in what tent would this be in? This would be by the sacred fires. He, ge he gestures to an area that has, it has like a tent area that's kind of covered. A, Thank you. you know, a, and uh, it has like a little altar area. You can tell it's, it's not made for cooking. It's made for sacrifice and ceremony. He says, shortly after midday. Thank and you. You're friend. welcome Thank to be you. there. Normally we would be very hospitable and take you into our tents. Some family would, 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 would adopt you temporarily and host. However, we are overburdened with the destruction of so many tribes and so many people in need we have we are incapable of doing it families cannot not take any more without risking starvation themselves we do have an encampment over here referred to as the tents of lament 
and you were free to stay there. We ask that you help, help where you can. And sometimes if you can help the tribe, we make sure that you get food. Everybody Tim, works, Tim, nobody quits. <laughs> Tim, the newcomers, are we here as well? Um, you, he's talking to you. He's talking oh, to you three. Okay, he's got talking it. to you three. Uh, he, he just looking at you, he could tell that Heapstag is a holy man. He's not sure what Elatron is, but he's kind of like, and uh, he he knew that you're just just a warrior. So, just a warrior. <laughs> so so uh, he's invited you to go to the tents of lament and look for a place to bed down. Before going, Red Fist will uh, look at him, uh, give a small nod of acknowledgement. Wise one, may I ask, what is the trouble with the tribe? What do the leaders confer on? Great decisions must be made in strategy. Hmm. I, I, I take a venture to guess and, and look over to Red Fist and say, I'm going to assume that they are referring to the fanged ones in the fanged, the, the heart, fanged hearts. We have been killing many and we have been destroying much of their ability to fight us and to stay healthy. I so use we, we forces have to rule this. Say again? I use his forces are everywhere. <clears throat> such are the times such are always the times the presence of the fanged one knocks off the balance of this world they need to be expunged from the area indeed so he uh he he says please excuse me and he has, more people are coming in are strangers and uh he gestures towards the uh, tents of lament all right um, without another word, I'll just kind of look around the rest of the encampment, uh, look at my newfound comrades and walk over toward the tents of lament. All right. You, you can see that there is a lot of bustling around and there's a sense of tension and there's a lot of worry on a lot of the, uh, the faces of the elderly, the women and children, people that are, are people that are not busy doing warlike things right now have a concerned look on their face. I also follow behind Red Fist when I see him head toward Lament. All right. So now we're Electron going to cut to the wonder over there. We'll cut to the tents of Lament now as the uh, uh, three are sitting down for their morning tea. Are you providing Rain some tea as well? Yes. All right. So she the the elderly the elderly woman really appreciates. You guys taking care of her, although she seems to be depressed. And she keeps asking that question. Why am I not dead? So even if, like, during that time, um, I was trying to, like, talk to her, have her tell me stories, that's really the only thing that she would say? It's not the only thing. Okay. No, she, she does talk. She she actually has, has been involved in a lot of ceremonies, and she has some knowledge of some holy sites that are, you know, in the, in the region. Then doing my due diligence, I would have just been listening to her, you know, just bringing her cups of tea as long as jothing permits and just trying to, you know, kind of okay. ease those stories out of her. Make an intelligence check. So this is the this is the way we do it on uh, my game is that you take your stat, multiply it by four, and that's the percentage you have to roll under. I want to roll a specific set of dice, and the reason why I want to roll these ones is because these ones you know, look you like... Have roll, you have to roll the bad dice. I want to roll these ones because these ones look like amber. So, let's see, I just have to figure out which one's a d20. It I'm mostly having a roll because I, it's a demonstration of how I do the stat, uh, how I do ability saving throws. Whoa, please don't tell me I lost my d20. One second. I might not be able to roll these. You need percentile. Oh, no, it was still in the bag. Oh, my God. I thought you said a D20 or percentile. No, no, no. no you said percentile. percentile. You, take, you take the stat in question, you multiply it by four, and that is the number you have to roll under on percentile dice. Okay. Well, I found the D20. That's good. 
All right, percentiles. 19. You rolled a 19? Yep. Okay. You're pretty sure that you know exactly where the Yarok is. And that's a, it's a, it's a stone circle of kind of pantheistic uh, import. It's near a sacred pond. <clears throat> and typically there's a stone circle there and, and sacrifices and cer ceremonies have been done there for as long as anyone has any cultural memory of it. And even tribes that are at war, if they meet there, there is no fighting. It's very, it's very holy place. Okay. However, you have heard that I use has, I use forces to typically desecrate the place, and no one has been using it or near there for quite some time. But you, you want to write down that you think you can, you know how to get there. You've never okay. been there yourself. Can I kind of like drop like a rough um, map upon her description? Based on the word that you know, you could travel so far, you follow this river. Okay. You you can get there. Just like uh, basic. Um, right. Okay. I'm not. I am not going to do that. But it, you can say that you have pretty good directions to get there, and it is by a big pond, so it helps you. I take note of those particular descriptions, and um, once we are all alone away from, uh, what was her name again? I'm sorry. Rain. 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 Thank you. Uh, once we are in a more private area, I'd like to discuss that with the rest of them. Okay. And how do you spell Yorok, by the way? Well, one, they don't have a written language, so you're sure. not actually writing notes. You can draw pictures, but... Okay, I'll and, draw like a and circle for a graph, pond, and later I'll be like, why type did I things. See? Um, you can also, uh, but for you, yar, Y-A-R, dash rock. Thank you. Just from, just from my notes. Thank you. Yar. And they're drinking tea. As you guys are drinking tea, talking about that last bully you slapped, you uh, see... Three additional newcomers arrive. Actually, they're kind of prefaced by a number of younger kids. Hey, hey, hey. There's three more strangers coming. Do you think they have food? They're coming over here. Probably not. <laughs> oh. So. And then they arrive. And you've heard their descriptions. And so... All you can, if you need to change your demeanor or, or something you're going to do when you arrive and you see some tents, you can tell the tents are cast offs. They're, they've been, some of them have been repaired, but not the greatest repair. Some look like they've been cut. Some look like an animal's been at it and like, like a bear or, or something big pour it, uh, but they've been fixed. There's smoky fires. It's kind of in a low area, so the ground is wetter than it is where the main camp, camp area is at. And it's a little boggy kind of nearby it, so it's not the greatest spot. But luckily, it's so cold, there's no mosquitoes, so count your blessings. You're not in Canada, are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Elytron doesn't look to mind the conditions, but he does look to be a little bit off-put by this many people being around him at once. Okay. Redfist... Um you know, is, is watching. He's, he's looking for leadership. He's watching the, 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 the groups and who is in what group, um, you know, who's watching whom just, just very observant, uh, taking in the surroundings appears to actually enjoy the cold outside and seems somewhat hesitant about stepping into a smoky tent. Jothi, well, the, the fires are outside. Jothi says to crack a, and indicating red fist i don't like the look of that one i think he might be important. why is that <laughs> just reminds me of some some in my old tribe do i notice his eyes on me Tim? sitting sitting beside i don't think so i don't think so Jolith, i gesture to uh red fist here please have a seat uh, so w I, I'm sorry if I missed this in the introduction, but would you each describe your characters really quickly? Oh, yes. Yeah, thanks. Okay, yeah. so Zothi is very um, 
slender. He looks like he's, he was underfed. So he, uh, 